Hello everyone, welcome back to another theatre vlog. So recently I went to see Wasted at the Southwark Playhouse. This is a new British musical and if you know me, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I love to see and support new British work where I can. So I was incredibly excited to be invited to see Wasted. I really love going to the Southwark Playhouse. It is one of my favorite venues in London, definitely one of my favorite off West End venues. So always happy to take a visit back there. And I was incredibly intrigued about Wasted. This show is about the Bronte family and I am really into historical musicals at the moment, especially historical musicals and plays too to be fair I have seen a couple of plays as well but more of a musicals person so Wasted is the program for it I am obsessed with the program I think it's amazing it had been on my list to see basically since it was announced I can't remember when it was announced off the top of my head but I remember even seeing the initial artwork for it and the concept I was like ooh, sounds intriguing I'm excited and I can't believe it's finally come around and it's happening. Where is this year going? So yeah, it's about the Bronte family. So not just the sisters, but they had a brother as well. I didn't know that. And it's a new musical written by, well, books and lyrics by Carl Miller, music by Christopher Ash. And I was really excited when the cast announcement came out, especially because Natasha Barnes was, well, announced to be being in the show. Where are my words? And I am such a fan of Natasha. I saw her, I think I might have seen her first performance when she went on in Funny Girl at the Mini Air Chocolate Factory. I feel like it was at the first one. There was a lot of drama. I thought she was amazing. And I also saw her at the Savoy Theatre in Funny Girl as well and just thought she was incredible. So to see her in something, that's always going to excite me. And I wasn't familiar with the other names in the show, but that doesn't really matter to me because if I like the thought of, or if I like the sound of a show, I'll go and see it anyway. It is a tiny cast. There's literally four of them, plus the band who are actually like visible on stage. So Natasha Barnes plays Charlotte Bronte. And then we've got Siobhan Athwell playing Emily Bronte, Molly Lynch playing Anne Bronte. I feel like I've said Bronte different type, like a different way every time. Um, and then Matthew Jacobs Morgan playing Branwell Bronte. Bronte, Bronte, please just excuse me. I'm probably saying it wrong, but we'll just deal with that. <laughs> so I'll admit I am not familiar with the Bronte family at all, really. Obviously I know about Jane Eyre, I know about Wuthering Heights, but apart from that, I think that is it. So I was really excited about the prospect of learning more about them and their lives. And I'd heard a mostly positive, but a couple of mixed reports before going in, but I always just go in with an open mind anyway, because we're all different and everyone likes different things. So I wasn't gonna let that kind of deter me or like influence my opinion, which is ironic, I know, because I am technically an influencer, but, I try not to be influenced too much. I did overall enjoy the show. However, I do feel like there's, there's always room for improvement. I think with a lot of shows still, that is the case. But most of the time I can't necessarily pinpoint what that is or like I have a very broad idea of what it is. Whereas for this show, I feel like there are definitely a few things that I could say confidently if this wasn't the case, then I would have enjoyed it a lot more. One of the things that I kind of struggled with with this show, and I feel really bad going into it sort of with a negative, um, 
it's all constructive. Sorry. Um, so with this show, it's a basically a kind of rock style musical about the Bronte family. So I really enjoyed what they did in terms of the set. The Southwark Playhouse is really small. So they you came in and it's a thrust kind of layout. So the audience is like that. Can you like that? There we go. That's a better description. So audience like that, stage here, and then the band were on like a sort of raised level as well. So I enjoyed the aesthetic of the show because the, there was like a square, slightly raised square, and that had like um, like sort of wooden planks on top. And that was essentially like the performer's main stage. And there were loads of microphones. Um, well, there were four microphones, maybe a couple more, and lots and lots of cables. So I think, I think for the majority of the show, their vocals were just going through the microphone feeds. And I think because of the size of the venue, because of the style of the music, and then them being on handheld microphones as well, it affected the sound for me quite a lot. Like there were quite a few times of the show where I couldn't really understand what was being said. And also because of all the cables and because of how close you are to the performers in this venue, especially on the front row, I was really paranoid that someone was gonna get hurt, someone was gonna trip over, someone was gonna land in the audience. And obviously they didn't, none of this happened, but that's not that's not fun to kind of worry about that when you're in an audience. But anyway, it was mainly the sound issue that I kind of took. Uh, well, I didn't take issue with it, but it obviously would have been nicer if everything was just kind of crystal clear. Having spoken to a friend afterwards about the show, uh, he brought up the point of, it'd be great if they used the microphones as an aesthetic, but the sound was actually going through like a normal head mic that um, most musicals do. I was like, oh my God, that would be brilliant because then they wouldn't need as many cables. <laughs> and so my anxiety would be okay. <laughs> yeah, then the sound would be crystal clear. I know some people will probably be like, well, what's the point of them having the microphones if they're not gonna sing through them? That was just my opinion. Anyway, I think I would have preferred that. I would love to know the idea behind having all of those cables as well though. In my mind, it was kind of like a sort of, maybe a visual thing of time and, oh God, this is gonna sound so wanky. Um, them sort of like being in time and being quite pivotal in it, but also not really noticing. And that kind of physical idea of wires being crossed and, and family ties and things like that. I could be completely off the mark there, but that's kind of how I saw it, literally, visually. <laughs> they sort of jumped around with the story a little bit. So I personally was a bit confused at that. I don't know if it's necessarily a confusing story or if it was just me. They had moments where they'd be talking to almost another figure, like, and it kind of set it up as if, as if they were being interrogated about what happened in their past. And they'd sort of be like staring off into a corner, looking up and as if, as if it was an interrogation, as if there was this sort of like ethereal being that none of us could see, but they were talking to them. And I don't think that aspect necessarily made sense in my mind, <laughs> because I was like, who are they talking to? Why are they talking to like history? Are they talking to, I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't know. So that aspect kind of confused me. Apart from that, everything narrative wise, did make sense to me. Just those those two things, I think, were the main factors that I didn't love about the show and I think could be worked upon to just be a little bit clearer. So that's that. Let's go back to the positives, shall we? So I really liked that they were obviously very brave in terms of breaking, breaking stereotypes, breaking um, kind of structures and forms with this show. I wouldn't say all of the music was necessarily my cup of tea, but they were definitely, oh my God, there have been so many little like chunks that have been stuck in my head, which I think is always a super good sign when you see a new musical and there's not a recording or anything of it and you come away and you have these little bits like stuck in your head. And I think there's a, yes. There is a music, the song list. So I'm not sure which song it would be, but there was a song where all of them, I believe at the start of it, 
uh, this little kind of like hook of all of them being around a table and being like in the same room together. They use this um, motif a couple of times in the show and it's it just kind of symbolized them all being together as an actual family unit. And it was like, all of us are in the room here at the table. And that was such a beautiful sound in that moment. And there were very rarely moments of kind of quiet in the show um, and I just feel like that kind of blended perfectly with the family being together and kind of almost still for a bit. I loved that. And then the act one f closer as well in five years time, I have a bit of it stuck in my head. I think there's a video actually of Natasha Barnes singing that. So I might insert a bit of it here because I loved that. And it's, yeah, that bit has been the one that's stuck in my head the most. In five years time, I'll be somebody myself inside. All the spirit that I thought had died Alive and free In five years time I'll be laughing at the fool I was I'll be laughing all the more because I spent so long in lonely shame So sure that life would be the same So sure that I would never see And this Visually as well, considering it is such a small space in the Southwark Playhouse, I really, really enjoyed uh, what they were doing with the visuals. There's one amazing visual that's been stuck in my head and I believe there's a production shot of it, so I will stick it here if I can. I think it's from the song, I would guess, Write It. Oh God, it was just stunning. They had all of these um, papers, which were actually uh, bits of the sheet music for the show. Uh, they were all in these like music gear trunks and they opened them up and then it was just like papers flying everywhere in the air and I think it's one of those moments of theatre that I'll probably never forget because it was so visually stunning. I absolutely loved it. That was, uh, was such a sharp moment in the show. I really, really loved that. Looking at the song list, I've just remembered another absolute banger in the show, and that was um, Extraordinary Woman, which Natasha Barnes sung. I loved that. That was such a strong tune. I think the individual songs definitely worked best, as I said, with the fact that of the sound quality. So when you could just kind of like focus in more on like the one person and their song, it definitely worked better. I feel like some of the songs kind of lost their magic because I couldn't fully hear what was going on. So as I say, there are definitely a few of those songs that I crystal clear do remember, but it would be nice to have the acoustics of the venue work with the style of the music a bit more so you can actually hear everything properly. I think it is so brave and amazing to put on a new musical in London, in anywhere. It's hard. So I'm really proud of everyone who's helped it get to this point. I do you think it's one of those pieces of work that I've seen and I think, you know what, with a bit more time, with a bit more tweaking, I definitely enjoy seeing it kind of a second time round. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to see things multiple times. So I think it's amazing, you know, that it's made it to the Southwark Playhouse and that people are getting to see it because it's so different when you have that audience there, they become the last piece of the puzzle and you need their feedback obviously. So I'd be really intrigued to see where this show goes in the future. I think it's really, really exciting to see shows like this are sort of twisting the genre and not conforming and changing it to how they want it to be. That's really admirable. So it's exciting. It's a really exciting time, I think, in the theatre scene at the moment for new pieces of work coming out, especially new musicals. I know I bang on about this, but I love musical theatre and I love new musical theatre coming through and I know that's so so difficult so to see that changing even just a little bit is wonderful. If you've been to see Wasted at the Southwark Playhouse please do let me know I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future. I make a lot of theatre content so if you enjoy that you might want to stick around. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.